this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is part of our video of the Gigabyte F2A 85XN Wi-Fi motherboard and this is where I just give you a quick overview, uh, tour if you will, of the UEFI dual BIOS found on this mini ITX motherboard. Now here on the first tab you have the option, uh, it's called MIT, where you will do some, essentially the uh, first option here is just an overview of what you have installed, your graphics, uh, rather your CPU, your memory, and uh, what what settings there are at currently. Same thing with the PCL status right here. But the PCL status gives you more options. For example, enabling the reset case open the the uh, case open status. Well, you and also the uh, shows you the volt current voltages and the current temperatures and the fan speeds that they're currently running at. Or you'll also have the option to adjust the fan speeds down here at the bottom where you have option for silent, manual, or disabled. Obviously, you know, manual gives you control over the PLVM slope and uh, you, you can revert back to disabled and it will run at uh, maximum RPM. And you have silent, of course, to run at these more silent uh, option and normal that's by default preset the same with the system fan options now go back up here and these three options right here are the essential settings that you will adjust if you're overclocking or in the case of uh, most HTPC users which probably will use this mini ITX board you would most likely want to downclock it to save uh, so lower temperature and uh, save power you have uh, for that of course you have advanced voltage settings you can see it just here uh, if you notice here that uh, the V core and uh, V core it seems to be a little high for a uh, for a default setting uh, in other words I've seen around 1.3 uh, less, a lot less than that definitely because uh, at 1.4125 a lot of people actually uh, overclock it to 4.5 gigahertz already by that already depending on, on uh, the chip you've got now you can also you can see how it's adjusted here you can adjust uh, by looking at the lower right hand corner it tells you that you can adjust it by using the page up page down button here obviously uh, by increments uh, see if you can type uh, in multiple steps so let's see eight two five one one now it just gives you uh, by step the nearest step option so just give that page up page down or you can just start typing auto you can go as low as that and uh, or you can just type normal and then also you have the dynamic V core adjustment uh, is enabled. Uh, you can access that once you set the CPU V card to auto. You can offset this one. Uh, it's either a negative offset or a positive offset. Now you have also the NV core adjustment and the uh, same thing with that. You set to normal. You get the uh, offset adjustments. Now for the DRAM, uh, in case you didn't load your XMP profile, you can and you don't have a memory that. That you don't want to run the XMP profile on the memory, you can adjust the DRAM voltage here. Uh, by default, it is 1.45 volts and auto. And here is also for additional overclocking um, options. You have the VCore load line calibration and the NV vid load line calibration options. And uh, you can see the steps here. Again, normal, extreme, medium, low, standard, and the same thing for the NV vid. Let's just revert this back to auto. Let's go back up and this is advanced memory frequency. Now, same where you have set the voltage already, you can also set the voltage. Actually, no, it's grayed out here, but it just uh, gives you the option DRAM timing selection. You have quick and expert mode. You have rank interleaving, challenge relieving, and also for each for setting each individual timings for both of the channels, you can go through here. And adjust the manual again. You just type typing in the number that you want, and it, it will automatically that to that. Or you just type auto to revert to the automatic option. I have plenty of options there, as you can see, for memory overclockers. And uh, just scroll through back up there again, as you can see it. And then I am going to revert back here to auto. And you can set the XMP memory profile depending on whether your module has that. If you set it to disabled, you can just use the multiplier to adjust that. Now, obviously, you can uh, it it 
you can't just type 1600 it will actually revert to a lower number and that you have if you want to set it to 1600 megahertz you have to type 16 in that option here and it will go to 16 mega 1600 megahertz if you type if you type 1600 it will actually go to uh, 800 megahertz so be careful that uh, you put in the right value there for the uh, multiplier now since we don't need that I can just type auto here and we'll detect whatever is on the revert to JDEC4 but I can just always load the profile as 1866 that is on my memory module now here is where you will do the actual overclocking for the CPU, the advanced frequency setting. Now we've set the voltage already. We've set you've set the uh, memory already. Now here you can have uh, some redundant options. You can also load the XMV profile here, but also you can enable the AMD memory profile. Of course, ac accessible uh, via the AMD Overdrive uh, desktop utility. You have also the system memory multiplier again, and a system memory frequency here at the bottom and there's a nested option here for advanced CPU core features or there's also a redundant option to set the clock ratio as it was on the unnest the uh, the higher level menu for the advanced frequency setting and also you have core performance boost turbo CPB disabled by default CPU ratio cool and quiet of course a power saving feature SVM, SVM mode which is a virtualization feature C6 mode again more power saving options uh, deeper sleep states and CPU core control you can adjust that through automatic mode or one compute unit and also you have the advanced power management option and uh, you can, as I showed you in there in the nested menu you have the CPU clock adjustment here you can just scroll down from one or just leave it at auto or you can just start typing uh, for example we want it to 4, 4 points uh, 5 gigahertz, 4.6 gigahertz so just type 46 and we'll go to that so you just keep on going down it will become automatic to revert back and there we go now the same for the um, um, the processor graphics clock you can adjust that here uh, which allows you to overclock the internal graphics. I uh, see it, you can adjust the increments of one megahertz. Now for the NB clock, you adjust it in uh, 100 megahertz increments. And for the uh, base clock, uh, PCIe clock control, you can adjust it in one megahertz increments. And back up. So that's pretty much it for the first tab here. Now the second tab is basically just the system option. You can set the date and time. You have the ATA port information, whatever is plugged in. We have my SSD plugged in there at the moment. And also you have the boot option priorities. Now if you have a, um, I've noticed that it, whenever I have a thumb drive plugged in, it will automatically prioritize the thumb drive whenever it's booting. So you want to go to the hardware BBS priorities first. If you have more than one drive installed, be it an SSD or be it a, a thumb drive. Uh, I don't have to worry about that because I only have one drive plugged in there. You have the boot up num lock state, security option, full screen logo show, which shows you the gigabyte pies when you boot. Initially, you have the OS type and more advanced options here for booting, administrator password and user password if you are uh, concerned with the security of your system, we're leaving it in, in place. And you have also the peripheral option. You have the IOMMU, SATA channel, and SATA type, HCI by default. Pretty much uh, most modern motherboards will be set to HCI now instead of IDE for faster uh, transfer, especially with using SSDs. You have USB devices where you can disable them here. HD audio, you can enable or disable them here. Onboard line controller, legacy USB support, XHCI and EHCI options, as well as port 60, 64 emulation. Now, here at the bottom, you have two nested options for the graphics configuration and SATA configuration. Now, obviously, graphics configuration will be the option to uh, you have uh, by default. It's set uh, the graphics primary video device is set to IGD to uh, NBPCIe slot video, but since I don't have a graphics card installed there. It defaulted. Uh, it even though it defaulted to that, it still detects uh, the second step and uses the IGD video. And also, for the integrated graphics, you have auto disable the force. 
what you can do, uh, what you should do is actually if you want to enable dual graphics is set it to forced and then this option at the bottom will, will show up. It's a UMA frame buffer size and what you will do is you want to uh, match this. Uh, you can set it all the way to 2 gigabytes, but you want to make sure to match this with whatever memory you have on your discrete graphics card that you're going to use for dual graphics uh, support with the um, your, with your uh, processor, for example, I have an A10 6800K here, and I paired it with an 86 seven, rather a 6670 uh, video card. Well, I'm going to set it to one gigabyte if I want to do a hybrid crossfire option. So uh, remember, set it to forced integrated graphics, set to forced, and set the UMA frame buffer size, and then restart. Now uh, I'm going to go back to that later because I have a little bit of issue with the way this is set up. Uh, because it essentially uh, you have to unplug the you have to shut down the computer and unplug the um, the DVI connector from the uh, video card when you're doing that and then move it to the discrete CPU in the back of the of the uh, motherboard. But uh, if you look here at the save and exit option, there is no option to just save and. Uh, and uh, save and exit will essentially will have you will have to restart it and you basically have to restart and then shut down the system so I would have liked if there was an option to save it and then just shut down so I can plug in uh, my, I can move my plug for the DVI connector but other than that it's pretty well for your peripherals now the next option you have to say the option where you will enable or disable hot plugging on those ports also you have the power options and uh, you have the power management option for the next tab or you have the resume alarm uh, AC back power on keyboard and uh, some more other power saving options then again once again the save and exit option where you have option to save and exit exit without saving low optimized defaults obviously you need that whenever you uh, after a failed overclock or after a uh, after a firmware update you want, always want to do load optimized defaults or if you have a faulty setting you have also the boot override again if you have more than one drive installed more items will show up here now as for the profiles you have the option to save and load profiles now the very neat about this is that you hit enter and uh, you have essentially eight slots it remembers my 4.7 gigahertz overclock uh, profile there and it also gives you an option to select a file or save a file into an FDD HDD or a USB drive now for the USB drive, it, you can only do it on a FAT16 or FAT32 formatted drive, similar to the uh, print screen option on the lower right side. And uh, that's pretty much it for this option. Uh, obviously, there is also the Q flash function, which allows you to update and flash your BIOS. Uh, it, it's essentially an external utility that will. Uh, it's separate from UFI that box that you see here, and it will launch and essentially give you a uh, an option to upgrade your BIOS from a uh, flash drive. And uh, that's pretty much it. If you want to read the rest of the review, just click on the link below or go to www.hightechlegion.com and search for the F2A85XN Wi Fi motherboard. And once again, this is Ron for Hightech Legion signing out. Thanks for watching.